Yeah, it's still done. Hey, welcome everybody to the Marketing Checklist Viewcast. We're Sharon and Hank Uloff from Uloff Creative Marketing Solutions. Uh, when you're looking to solve your marketing, sales, human resources, and other challenges, we are the small business. Uh, uh, damn it. That's where I blow it nine times. Duh. <laughs> okay. Oh, is this, we're starting all from the very beginning? Or? Yes. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll get back to it. We told you. We, we don't yeah. own it. We told you you're going to skip over something. No, no anyway, we ready. do Next. not edit. That's good. Roger, what I said is the first time I had to skip over some questions because you went long. So if you yeah. shorten it up this time, we can go in order. All right. Hey, can you can you move your camera down just a little bit? More Roger, less bookcase. Yeah. That's better. A little more. And I, I can back yeah. up a little bit. Or, there we go. Much better. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, much better. All right. Hey, welcome everybody to the Marketing Checklist Viewcast. We're Sharon and Hank Uloff from Uloff Creative Marketing Solutions. When you're looking to solve your marketing, sales, human resources challenges, we are the small business coaches that you call. On this Viewcast, you will meet and learn from successful entrepreneurs who are out there making it happen right now. Yep. Here's how it works. Uh, we have pre-sent several questions and received basic answers from our guests. Uh, so we're able to share with you the very best information. And here's the kicker. Uh, the interview will be just seven minutes, 21 seconds long. Because that's our wedding anniversary. That's it. <laughs> on the 21st. All right. Let's get started. Sharon, would you introduce our guest, uh, who's a friend of ours? We really like him a lot. Absolutely. Our guest today is Roger Carlson from Save the World Before Breakfast.com. One of the very best book titles I have ever seen. <laughs> That's awesome. It'll be in the show notes in case you didn't write that down. All right, Roger, keeping in mind that we only have a three story building, what is your elevator story? Good day. My story is three things that I can do help people. Relax and not worry so much about the end of the world. Second, help people find ways to invent and innovate around those. And third, have fun along the way. Like Mark Twain said when about his obituary, reports of my death are greatly exaggerated. World is that way too. Boom. Excellent. So expand just a little bit. What is your business really all about? Business is about writing books about all the worries and fixes to save the world and giving speeches about it, doing some more of those, having having fun along the way, hopefully entertaining people and giving them ideas. So why should our listeners flock to you? I can supply hope and help. There's There's been problems throughout the millennia. People would get in trouble, they'd run out of stuff. Uh, Nasty neighbors would come harassing them, and they invented ways to get around it. That's why we're still here. And I can I can tell them about it, and then they can do the rest. Okay. So what tips could you give to our listeners? Uh, first, uh, don't panic about uh, predicted ends of the world. Second, look what, to find ways to innovate, just like Henry Ford got us places faster. Man. Farmers learned how to get us a lot more food. Okay. Uh, what is an amusing job title for you? I would say a reality medic. People I really, have I these scare stories. And when you look at it, maybe it's not going to be quite so bad. And second, there are ways usually to fix it. Cool. What are the most common questions that you get about your business? Most common is, well, what if you're wrong and global warming is real? Number one, I say there is global warming, but it's not nearly as bad. And there's ways around. You can, you can live a little bit warmer, better than being a little bit colder, which has also happened on Earth. <laughs> okay. What was the most unexpected thing that you've encountered in your business? The most unexpected thing was I found out as far as the worries about global warming, a lot of the scientists that talked about it, like James Hansen, they say 
you really should go to nuclear. That's the only way to get around it. If you don't have fossil fuel, you're going to be cold and hungry unless you have something else. And nuclear does not make carbon dioxide or other warming gases. Nuclear's way, there's some better ways to run nuclear. That's a whole other story. Don't get me started because we only have seven. We won't. <laughs> yeah. our, clearly our cat finds you interesting because she came to listen. Um, <laughs> what are your, what are your, what's your favorite business tool that you use to get the job done in your business? The most important tool that I've seen is history. As Confucius said, if you want to know the future, look at the past. And he was, it was right. Because, and, go ahead. I was going to go to the next question, but you finish your sentence, finish your thought. Uh, that's probably, I'll leave it with Confucius. He's a smart guy. <laughs> Smarter than me. Uh, what four letter word best describes your business, Roger? Okay, I got to remember what, because I just came up with this today. It's fun. Fire, put some fire in your belly with F. Free yourself from bogus stories. I, innovate to get around them. R, remain calm when searching for solutions. And E, employ free enterprise. As uh, they said in, in the communes of the Soviet Union, it's five o'clock. There's a big hailstorm coming, oh, but it's five o'clock. I'm going home for supper. <sighs> the entrepreneurs, they're going to work till they get the job done. Yeah. Uh, what about your business makes you the most happy? The most fun thing about the business for me is I can find people that have had ideas that were great. And sometimes they won, sometimes they didn't. And sometimes those ones that didn't work at the time will work again. So it's a little bit of a detective story. And it's it's just inspiring. How many one of these people worked so hard, sometimes won, often lost, especially among the entrepreneurs. You hear about the guys that won <laughs> and gals. But anyway, the entrepreneurs kept the world going and will do so in the future. Excellent. What did you learn in nursery school that helps you the most in your business? In nursery school, the lesson I remember the most was that each day we wrote a new letter of our name. We learned one letter per day. And uh, I kept working at it. Next day, we would do one and two letters. <laughs> R-O, third letter day, R-O-G, and so on. And eventually, we could write our names. So keep working at it, and then you'll get things done. Yeah, you and I were done pretty quickly, but Alexandra had a much longer time of it. <laughs> what's what's the number one fantasy lead you could receive from being here? Who could be watching that you want to reach out to you? I I would think somebody that wants to sell their solar panels, and it's hard to find places, and there's and it's hard to get permission to have solar panels. Person that in some farm country would say. We can do agrivoltaics, where you put your panels in the midst of your fields, and that makes it a little bit cooler for the plants with a, a little bit of shade and still a little bit of sun, and it makes it cooler for the solar panels. So that helps. And then, so when people complain about not in my backyard, they say, this is for the farms. This is for your food. You've got to let us do it if you're worried about us running out of food, global warming. So come on. <laughs> I think I think we should figure out a way to make all of our driveways out of solar panels. People have tried that. It didn't quite work. However, yeah. it because uh, driveway is flat, panels have to be at a curve. However, yeah. that's suggested in California, we have all these canals. Exactly. So water. Now they're they are putting putting little little bridges over with solar panels. It and actually and that works cuts down on evaporation as well. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. How did you know that saving the world was, was going to be your calling? It all started in about seventh grade when I found a book called A, a Deep Range by Arthur C. Clarke. And that was huh? people with game wardens with little submarines having herds of whales helped feed the world. So science fiction, it was fun. So then there was another book 
by the same author, Profiles of the Future. That was Arthur C. Clarke, by the way. You heard about him in 2001 Space Odyssey. Well, instead of being a blast him up sci-fi, Profiles of the Future said, well, how are we going to get food? And it was just some nice, easy to understand things about, it. well, we can grow better. He said, maybe a little less meat. So I didn't think, how do we get minerals? He said, hey, there's lots of minerals. And he explained why. He explained all these things. And I said, you know, that's the kind of thinking about stuff that I'd like to do, just like Arthur C. Clarke. So it took me a while. I was I was working. Now I'm retired. <laughs> so I can write these things. I can read about them. I can talk to people about them. Hey, I give speeches. Did I mention that? Yes, <laughs> I give speeches. And, <laughs> and we're, we'll ask one more time at the end. Um, if someone's listening that likes a joint venture, who would be a great connection and partner for you in a joint venture project? Uh, another partner would be, there's these companies that have, uh, they're putting windmills way out to sea. Well, hey, you've already got a cable. You might, you could have some small power lines going along with it and have people doing uh, uh, aquaponics to raise clams, mussels, more seaweed, the harvest, and they could cut down on some, or they could get some money back for their expensive cables out there. So both outfits would be good, and it would be a greener sort of thing for the power company. Excellent. So it's a win-win for both of those outfits. Sure. Both of those would be possible uh, joint ventures. All right. Our last question. What offer would you like to give our listeners so they can begin a conversation with you? Okay. Well, I've got a, uh, uh, I'll never go hungry again. It's a one hour presentation plus uh, question and answers that I did about an hour, a year ago. It goes through a number of the food things because we're worried about there might not be enough food with climate change and energy. There's thousands not all in this hour but this is gets that, a, a start on those is that a video they can get that is a video that i can awesome. i can send okay excellent um and how should they reach out to connect with you should they go to the website saving the world before breakfast.com correct that is the place saving the world before breakfast.com all right that's fantastic hey we've gotten to the end awesome well, go connect with Roger at save the world before breakfast dot com. Wait a minute, that's saving. Saving the world. I, I wrote oh, save. is it? Wait a minute, save or saving? Saving. Saving. Okay, I, I will fix that in the show notes. <laughs> so connect with Roger at saving the world before breakfast dot com and connect with us at how to get there faster dot com. By the way, marketing tip. He should probably own both, say, of both of the URLs and have them both go to the website. So you Same might want, website. You might want to get save save the world before breakfast as well. Mm, yeah, for just that reason. Because yeah. just it that happened. reason. At the beginning, it was save, and then at the end, you you corrected it. Uh, so you might as well just get the other one and forward it to the website. So we don't want to. We never want to make somebody wrong because Sharon and I must messed up. All right. So. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I speak for a living. <laughs> Go to how to get there faster.com. Why are they going there? So you can get a, a book, a, a free 30 minute, uh, get your business focused success call with us. Uh, most small business owners report back that that call was worth at least $10,000 to them in increased sales or in savings off what they've been doing. I don't know, maybe that they don't have to do to market their business. That's how to get there faster.com. And if you would like to be on the Viewcast as well, then let us know when we talk after you book your call at howtogettherefaster.com. All right, everybody. We will see you next time. And remember, if everything happens for a reason, be the reason things happen. <laughs>